of our lesson on PV mounting systems. In part two, we looked at steep slope roof mount considerations. So now let's take a look at low slope or flat roofs in a little bit more detail. Flat roofs are seen on both residential and commercial buildings. And one thing to note is that flat roofs aren't really flat. They're typically pitched slightly in one or more directions to shed water. These kinds of roofs can present multiple challenges when trying to mount PV systems. So we're going to take a look at some of those challenges and some solutions and other things to consider. And we'll start by talking about ballasted systems because these are a very common and cost-effective option for mounting PV systems, especially on larger commercial type roofs. You probably aren't going to see these very frequently, if at all, on a residential project. So the way these systems work is that they have ballast blocks of specific engineered weights installed in trays which are attached to the PV racking system. And in some regions, these don't require any mechanical attachments to the roof surface. That means no penetrations, which means your leak liability is greatly reduced with these kinds of systems. In seismically active regions, you may have to compromise and use a hybrid approach and install a few attachments here and there as needed to keep the array in place in case of seismic activity. It just depends on the region that you're working in and the building codes in that area. And that would mean that you have some ballast blocks and some mechanical attachments. So you still would have potential leak issues to deal with at the attachment points. Since these types of systems rely on weight to resist the uplift forces that will act on that array, the building's roof structure is going to have to be evaluated by a structural engineer to make sure that it can handle the additional weight that the PV system will impose. And as I mentioned, you'll typically only see these on commercial projects, and manufacturers of these kinds of racking systems may have a minimum size that they will supply this type of racking for. So you'll need to check with your racking system manufacturer to make sure your system meets that minimum requirement, whatever it may be for that particular racking system. So let's take a look at some of the general components that you might see on these ballasted type systems. On the photo on the upper left, you can see the ballast trays, which hold the ballast blocks that are situated in between each of the module rows. And those ballast trays in this particular configuration are sitting on some mounting feet, which are different from the mounting feet we saw previously, those L feet, that's a different situation. So these types of feet will rest on the roof surface and they may have attachment points or some t sort of mechanical fastener that you can install with them, but they don't necessarily need to have it. And so another common type of a thing you'll see on these systems is wind deflectors, and then you'll have different kinds of mid-support clamps and end-support clamps to hold everything together. But they try to minimize the the n number of parts that are required, and so a lot of times these kinds of systems will, will not have a whole lot of different kinds of components that you need to put together, which can be nice when you're trying to put a large system together. In the photo on the bottom left, you can see a similar type of a system. This is a generally different, just a, sort of the same concept, but a different type of layout. So in this case, the ballast trays are on the, the back sides of those modules, and they don't rest on the roof directly. Instead, they rest on these rail structures that do have pads on the bottom, so you can see that in the bottom left of that photo, they rest directly on the roof and then the ballast tray is situate on the back side. And then check out this system in the upper right, that's a huge commercial scale installation. And this is a great demonstration of what a large ballasted system will look like on a commercial roof. And you can see there are perimeter setbacks away from the edge of the roof that have been adhered to as well as some fire access pathways that you can see down the center and periodically as you go down the, the length of that building. And then you can also see there are other pathways that have been left in the array layout to access rooftop equipment for maintenance. Okay, looking at this photo on the lower right, this is the same type of a concept. It's still a ballasted roof mount system, but it's a slight variation on that concept. And what we're looking at is a dual pitched 
racking system. So these modules are installed so that half the system is facing east and half the system is facing west and they're at a very low tilt angle. So the idea is that they will capture all the sun throughout the day across the whole system and you can fit more modules into a defined space than you would be able to with a sort of traditional south facing array layout in the northern hemisphere that would require spacing in between the rows to avoid inter-row shading and that results in a very much less dense module layout. This kind of a system may produce more than a traditional type system that's oriented due south or due north depending on what hemisphere you're in because of its higher density. More modules may equal more power even if they aren't oriented in what's considered an optimal orientation. This can be a good option when modules are cheap and you definitely will want to do a detailed production estimate using good software that can analyze this type of a system and compare it to a traditional south facing array in the same space just to, to make sure that it's actually going to be cost effective. As we've seen on the other systems that we've looked at so far, there are advantages and disadvantages to all these types of systems. So we'll take a look at some of those now. And as I mentioned, these have minimal to no roof penetrations and minimal to no structural attachments. So that means that you may save cost. It also means that you've really have a greatly reduced leak liability risk with, with these types of systems. They can have a cheaper upfront cost than other kinds of mounting systems. They go together fairly quickly and they don't require a lot of parts. And so the labor is going to be a little bit cheaper because you're not going to have a whole lot of complicated assembly that has to be done. These are typically assembled on the roof, but they go together very quickly. So as you can see, typically faster and easier to install than other kinds of roof, roof racking in general. Some disadvantages include the additional weight is likely going to require additional structural engineering. I don't think I've ever worked on a project on any type of a building where I've used a ballasted racking system that a professional structural engineer was not involved. It's extremely important that you have someone who can evaluate the existing building's structure be able to do that as part of the design phase to make sure that that, that roof can support the weight of the new system. Roof maintenance can become more difficult and so as you saw on the photo on the previous slide of that very large array, you need to make sure that you include pathways to equipment that might be mounted on the roof so that you have access for maintenance. But if you happen to install a system like the one you can see in the background here and you do end up with a leak somewhere out in the middle of that array field, that can make it much more difficult to get to that leak if you have to remove part of that system to get out there. And so they can cause a little bit of difficulty when there's issues to get where you have an issue that you have to get to out in the middle of an installation such as what you see in this particular background photo. Lower pitched arrays do not typically readily shed snow and dirt and so you might want to plan on having washing as part of your ongoing maintenance for your PV array. I've seen some pretty dirty arrays and they, they will definitely, that will definitely decrease the power production from, from a PV array. So they may not shed the snow very easily either in the winter and so you may not have as much production if you have a high snow area in the winter. Since these systems are so low to the roof surface, they can block debris such as leaves and other things that might find their way onto the roof and that can cause water blockage and prevent proper roof drainage. So that's one thing to kind of consider. You may have to also worry about during maintenance and it can be a little challenging to get up there and clean out leaves from underneath of those systems if that happens to be a, an issue on your project site. but. It's one, one more thing to think about. And again, sharp edges of racking can puncture roof membranes. And so you have to be careful during your installation, especially when you're dealing with those metal parts that are part of those racking assemblies. They can have sharp edges and corners. And if you happen to drop a piece of that metal onto the roof surface, you may end up puncturing it and not really being aware of it. So you have to be very careful if you do drop parts onto a roof that's that's a 
that's a membrane roof that you mark the spot and make sure that if it's not if it's not if it has been compromised that you take care of sealing that that particular location and be aware that additional ballast weight can actually compress roof insulation if a roof can't handle the additional weight of a ballasted racking system you may be able to install a low slope attached mounting system such as the ones you can see in these photos these types of systems may weigh less than a ballasted system, but if the rack structures are complicated, it may make them actually heavier. So it may work, it may not, you can try it. And there may be other certain situations where a low slope attached roof mounting system works better. You can achieve a steeper tilt with these types of systems. They have space underneath them for maintenance and there's all kinds of other reasons why these might make more sense than a ballasted system, given your particular type of roof and your project conditions. These types of racking systems with their potentially steeper pitch can make really good places for mounting inverters and other equipment. And so one of the nice things about, about this is that if that array is oriented in a sort of due south orientation or due north, depending on your hemisphere, then the in equipment and inverters and anything else that you mount on the back side of that array is going to be on the, the shady side. This type of attached mounting system is good for both commercial and residential installations and these racks are actually constructed on the roof in place and they typically consist of pipes or strut or a combination of those types of materials or other kinds of rail materials and they can be fairly labor intensive to build. Looking at the photos on the right side of the slide, we can see in that commercial installation there are some cone flashings that have been used on that membrane roof. And on the bottom left is an example of a residential installation where there are a couple rows of small pitched up ra attached racking systems. So it's a good solution for a residential flat roof. And of course on the upper left you can see the inverters mounted to the back sides of that rack in the shady side of the array. Okay, here we go with the advantages and disadvantages. Since these types of arrays are commonly going to be a little bit higher off the roof and they may have a steeper tilt angle, they will tend to have cooler cell temperatures than a flush mounted roof system or even maybe even a ballasted system. So that means potentially better efficiency and better production. These systems are mechanically attached to the building structure. So this is a really good solution for seismically active areas or for buildings which are dealing with vibration issues. These roofs can be potentially repaired without having to remove the array. So as I mentioned on the last couple slides for ballasted systems, if you end up having a leak in the middle of an array field, it could be difficult to have to remove half of that array to get to the location where the leak is and actually just identifying the location of the leak might be a challenging thing to do and so in this case you have more space to work around and roofs can be potentially repaired without having to take the array off and since they're higher off the roof surface they will tend to have less issues with leaves and other debris piling up underneath of them and restricting water drainage so as I mentioned early on sometimes advantages are also disadvantages depending on the situation. And so this is a great example of that scenario here, whereas in seismically active areas, these low slope attached type mounting systems can be good solutions because they're mechanically attached to the structure. However, mechanical attachments require roof penetrations. And so that's going to bring up the leak issue again. So that's one disadvantage is that you have a mechanical attachment to the structure, you have multiple mechanical attachments, but you also have to have roof penetrations in order to have those attachments. And that means more leak potential. These types of systems are most likely going to require a structural engineering review, especially because they are more custom built type solution. They are usually site specific and will most likely require an engineering review in order to make sure that they're going to be structurally sound and are going to be able to resist the forces that they need to resist. And so 
it's a good idea to have a structural engineering review on the racking system and the building to make sure the building can support them and to make sure that these racking systems are sufficient. These aren't, these aren't a typical kind of off-the-shelf solution like a ballasted system can be. You may have to work with a professional roofer to seal your roofing penetrations, especially on a commercial roof with a membrane type covering. That's You're most likely always going to have to work with a professional roofer to take care of sealing those penetrations so that you don't void the warranty and that the, the, the seals are made appropriately to the roofing type that you're working with. The upfront cost of these racking systems can be higher than ballasted systems because, as I mentioned, they are kind of a custom built solution and the racks are constructed on the roof and so that takes additional labor and you have a lot of additional parts that go into these kinds of systems as well. There's, addition, there's a lot of extra materials that are required to create these larger structures for these PV systems. When making any kind of attachment to an existing roof structure, it's important to fully understand that roof structure that you are attaching to. And flat roofs can be especially tricky in this regard because they are constructed in many different ways to facilitate drainage. So some of the questions you'll need to ask are what kind of decking is present? Is there insulation present? Is cricketing present? And you may need to do some thorough investigating and track down some existing structural as-built plans. If you can find those, that's, that can always be somewhat helpful. And just make sure you do some thorough investigating to make sure you understand the structure you're dealing with and that your attachments are going to be connected directly to structural members. You may have to drill down through several layers of foam and plywood or other materials in order to get to the actual roof structure to make your attachments. And if it's not really acceptable, to attach a standoff or a mounting foot or anything else to a flat roof surface and just assume that the attachment is going to be secure. You'll need to make sure and be very certain that you've located and attached to structural members and not just attached to a surface feature such as cricketing. And keep in mind if you are installing standoffs they will have to be tall enough to make it through all the layers and then be properly flashed as well. And So you may end up with some pretty tall standoff requirements depending on the, the construction of your roof. Let's talk a little bit about code required roof access pathways. So I've mentioned these types of pathways previously several times throughout the lesson so far and now let's, let's dig in a little bit deeper. So the International Code Council, also known as the ICC, publishes codes such as the International Building Code, International Residential Code, and International Fire Code. And these are adopted by local jurisdictions as minimum requirements for construction. And PV systems are definitely governed by these codes. Beginning in 2012, the International Fire Code includes requirements for access pathways for firefighters to be designed into PV system layouts on rooftops. These pathways allow firefighters to walk and move safely on roofs during fires and carry out their venting activities and other firefighting operations. These access pathways definitely take away from the usable space on a roof where PV modules could be installed, but they are required to be installed for firefighters safety and in most jurisdictions that you'll be installing in, you'll be required to have them as part of your design. Access requirements are going to vary based on which code is being enforced in the jurisdiction that you're working in. So you want to check with your jurisdiction to verify which code they are enforcing and that will help you determine what type of pathways you're going to have to design into your PV system. Requirements are also going to vary by roof type, roof shape, array size, and whether there are sprinklers present inside the building. The 2018 International Fire Code has slightly different requirements from the previous codes, but you will still be required to have one 36-inch pathway from eave to ridge on each roof plane where a PV system is installed. So that's going to look like that. And then access pathways are also going to be required along each ridge and must be 18 inches wide or 36 inches wide depending on the type of building. And in this case with this example that we have here it's going to be 36 inches wide in this case. So that would be along the ridge. And a closer look at code required pathways 
So we'll be required to have two 36 inch pathways from drip edge to ridge and one of them is going to have to be on the street or driveway side of the roof and one is going to have to be on the same or an adjacent plane as the PV system or straddling a valley. So in this case those will be on those parts of the roof that you see there. So we have pathways on each roof plane and the street or the driveway axis is sufficient. In this case there's no PV system on the up north side of that house. The ridge setback requirements are going to depend on several factors. You can install 18 inch wide ridge setbacks on each side of the ridge. If your PV array is less than or equal to 33% of the total roof area, or if the PV array is less than or equal to 66% of the total roof area and there are sprinkler system present in the house. You will need to install 36 inch wide ridge setbacks on each side of the ridge. If your PV array is larger than 33% of the total roof area, or if the PV array is larger than 66% of the total roof area with a sprinkler system present in the house. And that looks like that. Since we're discussing layouts and fire pathways, this is a good time to talk about fitting modules to a roof space. So you're going to need to know a few things in order to do a PV system layout on a roof. First is going to be the length and width dimensions of one of the PV modules that you're working with. You're also going to need to know the allowable mounting zones along a PV frame so that you know where those rails can be located. And you're going to note that the rails are going to extend a few inches beyond the modules to allow the end clamps to be adequately fastened. You're also going to need to know the width of the mid clamps and that's going to determine the gap space in between your modules. You'll also need to have a sketch of the roof plane with accurate dimensions. And ideally this comes from a site visit where you or someone else gets on the roof and measures the roof perimeter dimensions and the locations and heights of various objects that might be up there, different kinds of, of vents or other types of equipment that might be on the roof. You'll need to know the locations of that equipment and has to be documented. The dimensions should all be accurate and you should be able to create a scale drawing from the sketch that you take on site. And of course as we have already discussed you'll need to include fire setbacks in your layout. And so now that we have all this information we can start taking a look at how to calculate this PV array layout. In this example, the total length from eave to ridge, so that's the up-down dimension, is going to be 5,000 millimeters. The total width from left to right is going to be 11,500 millimeters. And the setback is going to be 3 feet wide in both cases, and so that's equivalent to 910 millimeters. So how many modules can we fit into that open roof space? The first thing we're going to do is subtract the horizontal access pathway from the total slope length from eave to ridge. And so in this case, this is going to be the total usable slope length. And for this example, it's going to be 5,000 millimeters from eave to ridge. And we're going to subtract the 910 millimeter setback. And that's going to give us 4,090 millimeters of usable space in the up and up down direction for modules. Next, we're going to subtract the setback width from the total width of the roof from left to right and left to right direction or the east to west direction. And so we're going to have 11,500 millimeters of total roof width. We're going to subtract the 910 millimeter setback and that's going to give us 10,590 millimeters of east west or left to right roof space for modules. And we're using millimeters here just because they are easy numbers to work with. The concept is going to be the same for inches or feet or meters as well. Now that we know the total usable portion of the roof space for our PV layout, how many modules can we actually fit in there? We need to figure that out. So we'll start by working in the left to right or east-west width dimension to figure out how many we can fit across from left to right. Using the module dimensions and the gap distances from the previous slide, we're going to divide the total usable roof width by the width of one module plus one gap space. And so recalling from the previous slide, one module width 
is 600 millimeters and one gap space is 25 millimeters. So we are going to divide 10,590 millimeters, which is the overall total east to west available roof space, by 625 millimeters. And that's going to give us 16.944. We're going to round down to 16 modules wide. So we're going to say 16 modules will fit across. Here's how we can check this. If we have 16 modules wide in the east-west direction, there are going to be 15 gaps, and each gap is going to be 25 millimeters based on the mid-clamp width. So we're going to have 15 gaps times 25 millimeters, and that's going to be 375 millimeters for a total overall gap width. We can add that to the total module width. So let's calculate the total module width. We have 600 millimeters for one module, times 16, which is going to give us 9,600 millimeters. We're going to add that total gap width, so that's going to be 9,600 plus 375 millimeters. And then we're going to add 75 millimeters for each row end, so two row ends is going to give us 2 times 75 for the overhang of the rails at the ends, so we have the adequate space on the rails to attach those end clamps. And that's going to give us a total PV array width of 10,125 millimeters. So that is less than our usable east-west roof space, which is 10,590 millimeters. So we're just, just, just under. We have a little bit of extra space, but not too much. And the array should fit just fine in there. So that 16 modules wide is going to work. To calculate how many modules will fit in the north-south or up-down direction, we're going to divide the total usable slope length by the length of one module plus one gap space of 25 millimeters. There won't be any clamps installed between the horizontal PV rows, but we're going to need to leave space there for expansion and contraction. So in this example, we're going to just assume a 25 millimeter gap for our horizontal rows to match the other gaps that we're dealing with. So in this case, we're going to have 4,090 millimeters divided by 1,025 millimeters is going to give us 3.99, and we're going to round down. And so I got that number, that 1,025 millimeter number is the 1,000 millimeter frame length of the module plus the, the 25 millimeter gap space. And so we come up with 3.99 and that's really close to four, but that's going to push us to the edge. And so I would say to round down in this case, so we're going to assume that the most we can fit is going to be three modules in the up and down or north-south direction. And we can check this by calculating three columns with two gaps, and each gap is going to be 25 millimeters. And so we have two rows, two gaps, and that's going to be a total of 50 millimeters for our gap width. And we can add that to the total module length times 3. And so in this case, calculating our total module length, we're going to have 1,000 millimeters, which is the frame length of the PV module, times 3 modules. And then we're going to add that 50 millimeter gap width. And that's going to give us 3,050 millimeters, which is less than our 4,090 millimeter north-south total usable roof space for modules. Now, your PV system may not be that big and that's that's great if you have more modules if you can fit more modules on the roof than you need to then you might want to consider expanding the system that you're proposing but you may not have to and so you may just have adequate space and you don't need to fill it up and it's not a concern on the other hand your roof space may not be big enough to accommodate the PV system that you are wanting to install. So if that's the case, you may need to look at other possible roof options. There may be other roofs on that, or other portions of that roof in different orientations that may be usable. Uh, and if there aren't, then you may have to consider downsizing your system. Well, we've reached the end of our lesson on PV mounting systems. So let's go through kind of a summary of what we've discussed throughout the lesson. And so we started by looking at three different types of ground-mounted PV array systems, which consist of what you'd call a ground mount, which is a low mounting system with a contiguous metal frame racking system and multiple foundations. There was the pole mount, 
which is PV array that's mounted on a single pole, either on the top of that pole or on the side. And then we had carports, which are large steel structures, which support generally large quantities of modules and are typically installed over parking lots. Some factors which determine the type of mounting system that will best suit your particular site. Lots of factors that we've gone over throughout these lessons, but some of the things that we touched on are the available space and whether you're going to install on the ground or the roof. And so if you have available space on the ground, you may be able to install a ground mounted system. If not, you may need to explore roof mounted options. And there's other cases where a roof might make more sense than a ground mounted option. The available sun access is also going to be a determining factor of which type of system you're going to install, whether it's going to be a tracking system or not, whether it's going to be a fixed tilt system, uh, whether it's going to be a lower pitched type of a system or a flatter pitched type of PV system. The roof type that you might be installing on if you're installing on a roof, the slope of that roof, and the covering type of that roof is also going to play a huge part in what type of racking you're going to choose. And of course, you always need to consider the budget and the project size and the application. Two advantages of having a roof-mounted PV system is, one is that they're going to cost less than ground-mounted systems for the most part because you're going to have fewer components and the structure already exists and you're going to have less labor to deal with. A second advantage to having a roof-mounted PV system is that you are also using space that's otherwise not being used. Finally, the purpose of access pathway requirements on roof-mounted PV systems is for firefighters to have access to the roof planes for venting and firefighting operations so they can move safely around the PV system and have escape routes if they need to during, during a fire. And here are some additional resources that you can check out at your leisure.